clicking the recording button. So hey, welcome back to the Alexandrian Codex. I'm Alex. This is Star Trek New Horizons Watch for Stellaris. We are going to keep continuing off where we were before. Now, uh, those savvy amongst you might be thinking, hey, this be weird. Alex was all hype about uh, playing Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. God, I hate that brand name change from Jurassic Park to Jurassic World. Jurassic World Evolution. And you're right, I was. But it's really shallow in a lot of ways. It's very pretty, but mostly shallow. And as it is a frontier title, it's not super well optimized. So I, I streamed it for five hours last night. Three of those five hours look great. Hour four starts looking real weird at certain points and hour five was completely borked, completely fucked. Uh, because the game was just processing too many things. I wasn't looking closely enough at OBS, and in order to make it run faster, I would have to decrease the recording and streaming quality to a point where the this real saving grace of the game, how pretty the dinosaurs are, and the graphics are, and how just aesthetically sound it is, would be completely lost. And the, uh, frankly, the gameplay mechanics don't hold up when you get rid of that. So instead, I'm switching over to a title that is aesthetically pretty, but mechanically sound. Now I think, more than anything, that's why I return to Paradox titles so often. Not that my processor ends up having problems with less optimized titles, and certainly Paradox can do some work on optimizing their games, but they've done a lot already. It's because even if I were just podcasting this and you could only hear the audio, I have enough substantial stuff to talk about be besides, oh, it's so pretty, oh, it's so nice, wow, look at that, that, you know, there's something to more substantially listen to. Anyway, anyway, I'll get the fuck off my high horse. Uh, it's been a hot minute since we played this. We integrated the binars up here, that's right. We integrated the Bajorans down here. Right, we started getting all these people into our uh, federation because of because they wanted to be our protectorate that's right so we're we're actually fucking massive yeah yeah right okay yeah how am I how am I sounding fine Game audio is a little quiet. Did I turn this down? Oh my god, I did. Alright, even though it is louder, I'm still an ass and significantly louder than it is. Oh, what are we doing? There's a lot of things that seem to think they need to be upgraded. Let's just unpause. If something significant happens and I need to pause, we'll, we'll Construction complete. approach that as needed. Oh god, yeah, I have no idea what the fuck we were doing. Probably, nope. I was gonna say exploring over here. Survey. Yeah, we integrated the binar so recently we haven't even gone in and built anything over here. Fudge. Well, we incorporated them recently, but not so recently that I didn't appoint them as <laughs> leaders. Oh, this is making me long for an upgrade all button. Yeah, I just jump into the game and <laughs> already, this game needs this improvement and that improvement. That's okay. I haven't actually watched all that much from PDXCon from Paradox's convention. Pardon the weird mic sounds, I'm just tightening this mic stand, mic arm a little bit, because it was, it's still doing way more wiggling than it normally does. That's mildly concerning, but probably fine. Oh, each of these is costing 30 influence? Dang. All right, well that's, uh, that's expensive in a way that I don't love. 
So all those survey completes, those are coming from manually surveying the uh, galactic core, I think. Right? I was making quite an effort to do that. Uh, Batal. Yeah, this name, Batal, I guess is how you would pronounce it, is pretty funny to me because when I was very young and still playing Galactic Civilizations 2? Or Galactic Civilizations 1, maybe. You could, I think the original, you could customize a civilization. And the first civilization I ever made were called the Batyl. B-A-T-Y-L. So, Batil or something like that. And their home planet was spelled that way. Now, I know this game isn't referencing the weird thing I made as a kid, but still. Pretty cool. Uh, do we just go forward? I guess we go forward. Sure. No? Nope. Oh, right. We have no influence. Malkorian refugees arrive. Flotilla of civilian transports carrying Malkorian refugees from the Cardassian Union have arrived in our space. Malkorian? Okay, they've settled here, but they look exactly like humans? Ah, no, Malkorian. So you're egalitarian, continental preference, nomadic, charismatic. Dope, so you're functionally human. Then now the Cardassians were getting all... Yes. Genocidal. Child genius? All right. Right. I forgot about this. Good. And we're spending tons of minerals on upgrading these star bases for no new, for no real reason, I should say. I think we've been yeah, adding on trade depots and colonial bureaus. Yep. Is that correct? Technology that is correct. Discovered. There. Assault Phaser 2's Super Collider. What are you? Cool. Plus, uh, quantum Plasmodyne Relays. Not about that. Tile Physics Output plus 15%. Wow, okay. Either of these are very, very good. Energy. Now, this is tempting for the power increase, but our power output's looking great. So maybe eventually. I'm going to go Super Collider. Am I... Yeah, um... Hmm. Yeah, I guess I am. I don't even know if I'm going to build them, but I want to have them all the same. Who are we... Oh, we're not eating anyone. So, do we want to go after the Lurian Principality, who are very small. The Lurians are... Noskins are here. The Wurian Principality, I do not remember where they are, but they're tiny. If I'm remembering this correctly. Alternatively, I'm wrong and they're massive, but I'm pretty sure they're tiny. The Akamarian Sovereignty. Now, Akamar, I know, is tiny. Yeah, uh, okay. Akamar is here. So, uh, we should we should do the Noskins before for Akamar. Akamar would be, well, we're not getting this system anyway, or the Cation Union. The Cation Union's way the fuck down here. Yeah, already in here. Uh, I want the Nausicans, because this will give us more systems. The rest are single state miners and don't really matter all that much. I don't think the Nausicans are expanding. No, they aren't. They're already boxed in, so this will just open up our borders a little bit. We can't afford to do anything except low intensity negotiations, but let's go after the big fish first. It's, you know, it's more fun that way. How are we doing on construction ships? Now I know I probably have a lot of bored we idling ships because there's a lot of work to do. Let's go, go out here to Packhurst. Because I really want to explore these, cut off the Tholians, maybe go border the Niverite Alliance up here. You're waiting to go in here, right? These fleets are ready to go in. Why don't we just do that now? 
before I forget. This will probably eat a fair number of casualties, but that's okay. Do I want to reinforce this fleet? Am I already reinforcing this fleet? Is that why I haven't sent them? Stop. Yeah, stop and reinforce. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Rhea is up here. Now we're running into not having enough influence to continue expanding at the rate I want to up here. I would love to get a construction ship over here. Can I build one locally? I should just build one locally. Where's where's Batal or Batal or this? Where's this planet I don't want to let go of? Over in the Pacifica system, nothing down here looks like it needs improvement. So let's just hop down to Abreu. Give me a construction ship. Now we're making a fuck ton of minerals, but... We are still finding all sorts of things to spend minerals on. Discovered. Oh no, a good situation, because having too many and nothing to spend them on initiating communications can be a problem all its own imperial charter sometimes a written form is the best way to convince our people that our traditions and beliefs are superior let us create a charter that reflects the benefits of our governing ethics for the rest of our subjects to finally understand what it means to be a part of something great edict duration plus 15 percent that's not really that significant but let's go for it because it's rare and you never know when rare things will show back up. The Nobula wants a research agreement? Hell yeah. And they'll pay me for it. That's looking good. Ooh, a lot of things are getting upgraded, right? Our naval capacity just exploded as well. Because I finally started refining some of our dilithium. Which is still largely unrefined. Uh, Federation. Yeah, I guess we should finish up Federation. Building cost is de decreased by 10%. Ship up three, <laughs> up creep, upkeep is decreased by five. Eh, you know, slightly noticeable increases there. More importantly, that gives us an ascension perk. World Shaper is cool, but we're not terraforming yet. Soon, but not yet. Sensor range increased. Eh. Naval capacity increase, maybe, but probably not. Fleet command limit is tempting. Diplomatic core, honestly, this is tempting. Just to make our vassal stay in line, or our uh, protectorates, rather, to get people more willing and more enthusiastic to join our federation, and just to increase relations with everyone. Of course, it'll be a very slow-going game if everybody just loves us all the time. Free Enterprise... <sighs> Fuck, it's tempting. I keep talking about this being a thing I should do. Yeah, fuck it. This'll get rid of so much micromanaging I have to do. Just hit me up with it. I'm... <laughs> I've prided myself on doing that micromanaging, but we should just pick that up. The Antikins are insulting us. Excuse you? Excuse you! So, they are upset because of the relative power of subjects. Relative power of subjects also includes every minor state in our federation. Just a lot. Oh, we can start integrating them, though. Not that I want to. What I want them to do is stop... Construction complete. <sighs> I like them being protectorates, because protectorates give us influence. We can integrate our protectorates, which I like, but we can't then take a planet we have and turn it into a member of the Federation in the same way that the Vulcans or Andorians or Denobians are. I would really, really like it if there were a way to do that. If the... I know that's awkward, but if the mod authors could create a sort of integrate subject that would be like uh, integrate into Federation so that it would stop being a protectorate and turn into a member world. 
that's what I'd really like to see. That doesn't seem super hard to do. Ah, uh, yeah, let's, let's write that down so I can actually make a post asking for that or just do it myself and be like, hey, this is some code. Turn a decision action to turn vassal or protectorate into member world not annex. This annexation is fine and good, but it doesn't really make it's inconsistent. And not in a substantial way, but just minorly inconsistent. For now, all these vassals and <laughs> uh, protectorates are just going to fuel our filling up of all this space. Construction. And that complete. will be fine and good. Construction and complete. Fantastic. Here, we'll go ahead and reinforce that fleet as well. Construction complete. Can't afford another upgrade right complete. yet, but soon. Construction complete. God damn, what are we... Oh, all the things I queued up. Yep. <laughs> what are we building? Shibos the things you said to build, boss. Ah! Alright, fair. Construction complete. Mm-hmm. Construction complete. Are all of these here? Construction complete. So now I no longer have to go in here and click this, right? We just get a free traffic control. Complete. Fuck, that's nice. <laughs> that's that's one less increasingly aggressive micromanagement I have to do. I I actually really appreciate that. Complete. What is with the path that this is take? Oh right, I assigned it to go build all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Construction complete. Give me a... Oh, you didn't come with a traffic control center. Orbital science center, and then upgrade you. Are you upgrading? You are, you're making an orbital science center, and then upgrading. And you're upgrading. I think these are things I inherited from... No, these are things I built. Ah, weird. Don't know why I didn't upgrade those sooner. Past Alex, I'm sure, had a very good explanation for why, why I was doing that, but Anomaly detected. I don't remember. Rainbow in the dark. Sensors pick up an unusual reading in the vicinity of 3770 DST. Readings that are hard to explain, being this close to a black hole. Not just any black hole, this is Sagittarius A. This is THE black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. It's a super massive black hole. Which, Initiating communication. just just as a point of interest, again, Sag Sagittarius A. Thank you, Google. This is do, 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 do. Sagittarius A is a bright and very compact astronomical radio source at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, near the border of the constellations Sagittarius and Scorpius. It's part of a larger astronomical feature known as Sagittarius A. Sagittarius A, and this is with uh, uh, ampersand above it, is thought to be the location of a supermassive black hole, like those that are now generally accepted to be at the center of most spiral and elliptical galaxies. Observations of the star S2 in orbit of Sagittarius A ampersand have been shown used to show the presence of and produce data about the Milky Way's central supermassive black hole and have led to the conclusion that Sagittarius A ampersand is the site of that black hole. Uh, can you tell me what do 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 
Astronomers have been using, I'm just reading the Wikipedia article if you're curious. Astronomers have been used, unable to observe Sagittarius A ampersand in the optical spectrum because of the effect of the 25 magnitudes of extinction by dust and gas between the source and Earth. Several teams of researchers have attempted to image Sagittarius A ampersand in the radio spectrum using very long baseline infer <laughs> interferometry, VLBI. The current highest resolution measurement, made at a wavelength of 1.3 micrometers, indicates an angular diameter for the source of 37 UAS, that's not a U, that's a Greek symbol, I don't remember what it is, at the distance of 26,000 light years. This U is a diameter of 44 million kilometers. For comparison, Earth is 150 million kilometers from the Sun, and Mercury is about 46 million kilometers. So this my, my point, my very long point, is the size of this should scale, if this is done properly, and it isn't, to the size of, that's Venus, Mercury, to the Sun. This. This is how big it would be. Fucking tiny. Black holes, even supermassive black holes, are fucking tiny. Don't make them absurdly massive like this because you think it's cool. A supermassive black hole is not actually all that big. The, the core of the thing is really small. Now its area of effect, which is this, should be big. But this, the black part no light escapes, is actually relatively compact. Its area of effect is this. It's huge. But the, the core of it, the, the black, invisible, invisible core of it, it's not actually all that big. This is, uh, it's such a tiny nitpick, but holy fuck, it pisses me off how real space does this. And also, just look, look at how bad this looks up here. It's, it's clipping with the... <laughs> this was a poorly executed system. I'm not bitter. Construction complete. Not, not, not in the least. Now, I, I understand the immediate response is, Alex, this is a science fiction setting. But that's no reason to be just completely, blatantly wrong about something. It took me, it took me, what, like all of two minutes to Google the Wikipedia article on this astronomical anomaly, read it out and say best project projections are 44 million kilometers in diameter. Big! Not that big. Construction complete. Uh, yeah. Just inspiring me to get back to work on my mod. So, you know, not... Not totally... Useless, bitter energy. It's, it's going to a good source. <laughs> Motivating me to actually get back to coding a little bit. Now, this should automatically have it equipped. It does. It does. All right, cool. Yeah, you're idling to go to Trappist Abreu. Right, 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 right. I just built you. Can't do that. Can't build in Lux. Can you build in Steelman? Good. Packhurst. You can. And Boosie. Oh, Sealer. And Boosie, my boy. Beautiful. Technology discovered. Ah, uh, you're done, which means I should move you up here and try to get you to do something up here. Prototyping engineering facility. Dope. I don't know if we'll actually make use of that. Rotating integrity, structural integrity field, more hit points, mineral silo, don't care about. Bolstered planetary shield, don't care about. The hull improvement is probably the best thing for me to pick up here. More star base capacity means more science by proxy, so that's quite cool. Uh, yeah, let's do this. It'll keep me spending and spending, so we're not going to run out of things to buy. Can you build an outpost and Light's End is too far away, actually. Really? 
No. Um, is it that white end? Isn't that far away? No, it's it's too far away. Keaton? Yeah. You can go in Keaton. You're already occupied. Harold. Go survey this and then survey that. Who talking to me? Nope. No, no, no. No interest. Maxia Zeta. Oh, you're in orbit the same star. I just can't read. Fair enough. Imperial Charter's done. Edict duration increasing isn't a huge deal. Leader recruitment cost this. <laughs> We are rowing in energy. This isn't useful at all. Border friction reduction, however, might be pretty cool. Um, yeah, learning how to deal with alien cultures and traditions is an important part of becoming a galactic power. Let's go for that. Oh yeah, Dozy, you want... Yeah. I will definitely open my borders to... Now, the Dozy, Dozi or whatever, I believe are... Yeah, tropical home. Yeah, you would... Probably migrate to some of my planets. If you have any planets open, we'll definitely migrate to you. God, I keep forgetting how big we are. I keep thinking we're just this. I'm like, Jesus, we're huge. And then I zoom out like we have this blob and this blob. And all that told, we would still almost only have a quarter of the galaxy under our control. Only a quarter. <laughs> now these fleets say 13 ships but if we go into fleet manager <laughs> the fleet limit has gone up so much jesus christ yeah now now each can have a total of 20 holy fuck man yeah once you start hitting mid to late game and unlocking more and more expensive <laughs> ships and fleets and uh stations you can spend so much so much minerals even if i were cheating and heavily cheating at that just typing in minerals minerals which is what five thousand minerals every time we'd be bleeding through resources is it not a complaint this is me being excited about this uh, because normally late game Stellaris just turns into oh my god I have too many minerals and nothing to spend them on except more fleets and more fleets it's cool to me that I actually have uh, not not you know infrastructure in the most traditional sense but you know infrastructure to spend on with all this money because it does seem now the argument could be made and, and probably should be fairly made that Technically, <laughs> you you can spend it on infrastructure in Vanilla Stellaris by building megastructures. But we are not even at the megastructure point of the game. We just started unlocking terraforming, for fuck's sake. We, we got a ways to go. I know every time I upgrade one of these, it's one more colonial system we're not grabbing, but just, just let it happen. Oh, prototyping facilities can only be built on our capital world? Oh. Well, that's fair, I guess. They're the top tier science building. Kind of makes sense. It's a little disappointing, but it kind of makes sense. Okay, with 13, 13, each of these will have a strength of 8 point whatever. Even one of these fleets should have been able to should be able, not should have, we haven't made an attempt yet, should be able to wipe these out. So two, it's a total of 16k versus, what, like 7k? No, six, 7.2k, yeah, like 7k. <laughs> not actually 7k, but eh, you know, ballpark. Discovered. Super colliders, dope. Down the drain. Okay, interesting. Oh, Defiant class! Uh, I The Defiant's one of my favorite ships, so I'm tempted to just grab that immediately. We can have hollow suites uh, and holodecks. Oh, man. 
The advent of holographic projections means that our citizens can live in a state of virtual bliss where their every need is met from the comfort of their own home. What does it matter if it's real or not? Yeah. Uh, wow, okay. No, we're getting into some very cool stuff. This gives better phaser cannons. Oh, God, that's tempting. And a defiant class hole. I'm going to go for the phaser cannon. I'm going to go for the defiant. <laughs> Even though we might not use it, I still want it. Down the drain. The readings originate from a small metal pod. Science officer Colin Webb has determined to be it to be a lifeboat of ancient and alien make. Evidently, caught in the outskirts of the black hole's gravity well eons ago, at an angle just short of slingshot maneuver, whether this was the intent or happenstance is difficult to judge. The pod's automated thrusters have been fighting its descent into the event horizon ever since. It's now too close to the event horizon to salvage. Colin Webb's report ends abruptly, and the crew of the UESP manhire communicate that the science officer appears to be shaken and deeply troubled by the tragic fate of the lifeboat. They have the paranoid trait now. Paranoid decreases research speed and anomaly research speed. Paranoid is terrible. Like, th this bothers me so much. These, these asteroids are within the event horizon of this black hole. The event horizon is this <laughs> this is where they should be because this is not a stable orbit this is where not even light can escape but at this point this is where only I, whatever whatever but it's don't don't look at it <laughs> don't get tilted Uh, I can be such an angry old man when it comes to when it comes to some things. This isn't realistic. It advertised itself as being real, and it's not real. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not saying I'm wrong, or that I'm uh, not justified in my crotchetiness. Just that I own it. <laughs> All right, medical is met. Met Mechatol is done. The Peony Star really couldn't be built? Huh. This really could have anything else built on it? Nah, nah, this can definitely have more built on it. I just skipped that. Oh, the game's paused. I paused it. These are crystalline entities. Actually, used to be pretty badass. Still are, you know, tough cookies. Engaging enemy fleet. But we should be able to eat this. I'm seeing like three different models of ship here. I'm seeing this, this, and this. I'm seeing three different generations of starships in here. Wow, our phaser projectiles are so small, they're really hard to make out against this red background. Trappist is uh, is another system I have a nitpick about. Just any real system portrayed in the uh, real space mod, I'm nitpicky about. So, this, this cool spiral shape going on here is not cool. This is laziness. It's because each of these planets has, in the, in the code, specified the exact same orbital angle. Orbital angle defines the relative position of each planet relative to the previous planet. So if this There that's that's set if one planet is set at 45 degrees It'll be here of the previous planet then if 45 degrees is a value still kept the next one will be another 45 degrees another 45 degrees another 45 degrees and so on until you make a spiral shape Looks kind of cool, but it also is super artificial. We know enough about the Trappist system that the relative uh, position of different bodies at a, at a given point of time is something we can roughly, roughly model. Or, and if you don't want to do that work, and I can understand not wanting to do that work, instead of saying orbit angle equals 45, you can do orbit angle equals and then set up a parenthetical 
uh, minimum equals 45, maximum equals uh, 180 or 270 or whatever. And then, rather than every planet being set at a 45 degree angle relative to the previous one, it'll be between 45 degrees and 270 degrees. So it'll be somewhere within this axis that the next one is placed, that is randomly generated uh, during galaxy creation. That is maybe the best way to to generate planets uh orbit angle in stellaris if you're going and modding this of course this is like episode <sighs> big number big number so if you're watching this youtube series at this point or me streaming right now you're probably not watching to get coding tips but do it <laughs> do it also most of the planets in the trappist system are not the good prospects that we thought that they were for life some are a couple are but only a couple the rest also their orbits are way closer to each other than this even relative to the size of their tiny star and the outermost planets in the trappist system might actually be gas dwarfs or uh, small gas planets so this entire thing is wrong uh, again, again, I know. Shut up, Alex. Go work on your mod if you have a problem with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well... I'm trying to find the free time, I promise you. We haven't lost a ship yet, and... Well, I was about to say we're not going to, but the USS Islamabad is looking real bad. So I hope we don't, but we may. <sighs> I gotta say, I I have a great deal of admiration for the amount of agonizing work that the New Horizons dev team have gone into, into positioning stars relatively in the same position every single time you load a map, because Stellaris map maker... It's not an easy thing to interact with. It is awkward and the devs have on a number of occasions mentioned that they want, or at least they're waiting on better dev tools to be made available to modders with regard to where stars are positioned in relation to one another because it's already hard enough to get this to work out, which is a shame. But it is. It's a real pain. By and large, Stellaris is very easy to modify and code, especially when compared to certain other titles out there. But it could, it could still be easier. It could still be a bit, bit more intuitive. Certain systems like Galaxy Creation or Star Creation or uh, just... just the order that things are spawned into the game could be made a bit more intuitive to the audience or to uh to modders in particular Construction complete. not that it has to be just that it could be let's go ahead build me one of these build me one of those upgrade Am I doing that in the wrong order? Oh, whatever. It'll get done. <laughs> if, if I'm missing something else, I'll, I'll build it later. Border friction reduction is great. Uh, cultural forum is probably what I should be going here. For more unity output. However, this is a rare technology. Memory, memory engram interface. A memory engram is an impression made physically in neural tissue by the brain by any mental stimulus thereby explaining the persistence of a memory. By researching these further, an interface could be developed to transfer memories into storage. Leader experience gain plus 25%. How's this doing? We didn't upgrade this? Oh man, yeah, Starbase 1 should have been the first thing we upgraded. Should I call this Jupiter Station? Probably, yeah. 
Jupiter station, although in the in the game or uh, universe is in orbit of Jupiter, I think. It's the main construction yard for Starfleet. <laughs> or at least it's a shipyard? Hmm. No, no, I'm not actually 100% about the statement I just made. No, oh, well, another day in the life. Nothing new there. Okay. <laughs> Willing to bet that 8.5 is not to reinforce that entire fleet yet. No? We can reinforce five ships for... God damn. 23,000. Well, that's expensive, but it's not that expensive. Next up is going to be the Malona system down here. And the Gamma... Equio? 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 Is that Equi? <laughs> what the hell is this word? Equi? Yeah. Equi? 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 That system. Right, you're all done in Keaton. I think we're already building in White's End. Going up to Herald. Man, it is crazy to me that the Sulban have just made this gross snake-looking empire. It's working for them. Klingon still haven't eaten the House of Osto. <laughs> I was I was looking at this mod. This is not the only galaxy map you can play on. There's a smaller galaxy map. It's it's very simplified. The Survey. players are cut down to major major factions. Like you don't have the Denobulans, you don't have the Beta Z Betazoids or the Trill, you don't have the Zenkethi, you have major major factions. But it runs a lot faster, and you start hitting the historical borders of these different powers a lot easier and a lot more consistently. So I've been thinking about playing around with that. I'm not 100% on it, though. I haven't made up my mind. Don't take that to infer that I'm going to abandon the safe because... <laughs> I've spent enough time in this, I'm invested enough in this, that this save is going to go for a very, very long time. It's too late to back out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lots more physics. One hundred and eight. God damn, that is a lot of engineering output. And still... Still, despite Technology that, discovered. engineering is our lowest output thing. Couple more star bases, so we are going to have to... Well, we're going to want to, not have to. We'll want to take a look at how to better implement those. More mining complexes. Now, normally I wouldn't be too crazy about this, but our mineral income is what's holding us back right now. Strangely enough. And May Carter Lynn here is a materials expert, so... This will get researched in good, good time. But, um... Survey complete. We almost, in a month or two, will have enough to completely reinforce our fleets. Now, I kind of want to wait uh, a whole six months or five months until phaser cannon is done. Just to see if we might include these phaser cannons. But more likely, if I can make the Defiant class a unique design for the Federation Heavy Escort class, the Defiant class emphasizes multiple heavy cannon weapon emplacements. And I really, really would love to get those. Unless it's a battlecruiser. If it's a battlecruiser, that sucks. But the Defiant is a destroyer 
sized ship. So I'll be incredibly happy if that gives a resurgence for what we can do with our destroyers. Wasn't I talking about, uh, I believe I was talking about, oh, we need to start easing off of having so many destroyers and start including some cruisers. Let's see. <laughs> see to how much weight you should have placed in that promise. <laughs> no, no, definitely. Definitely we'll build cruisers. Eventually. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, not, not an empty promise at all. This will cost 45? Yep, 45. So we'll have to wait another month. Construction complete. Herald. This will give us Latinum. Do we already have Latinum? Wow, this will be our first unit of Latinum. So Latinum will increase our governing ethics attraction by 20%. I know that doesn't seem significant, but literally any bonus we can get to that is great because it will decrease the size of the neo-transcendentalists who are a scourge. <laughs> they make up a, a sizable percentage of our population. They're the third biggest group by order of magnitude. They're not, you know, they're a fourth of the size of Doctors Without Borders, half the size of Solar Freedom Movement, but they're larger than the Earth Mining Consortium and Daystrom Institute of Technology, and I'd much rather be, have people be in here Technology or in here discovered. than in here. Phaser cannons! Alright, dope. Uh, weapon modification? Yeah, let's just keep specializing because that's free. Please be a destroyer part. It's not! Is it a cruiser part? It's not. Is it a battle cruiser part? I'm confused. Is this a patrol frigate? Battleship? What? Battle cruiser? No. No. Is there a ship class we don't have? <laughs> let's let's reread that tech. Research. A unique design for the Federation Heavy Escort class. So maybe Heavy Escort is a type of ship class that we don't have yet? I suppose it is. Well, what a waste of time. That's okay. Just, whoops. How's power doing on here? Right, we don't want this. We want... Uh, no, 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 no. This isn't the problem. The problem is you trying to... not use transport. Yeah. Weapon damage plus 6%. Wow, what is wrong with this? This warp engine utilizes a ring-like outboard coil manifold. Oh, this is the old school style one. Cheap to mass produce. However, it comes at the cost of power generation. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, not, not at all. We are not doing that. Um... Dervish device gives weapon damage plus 20%, right? Humanitarian aid, I'm not interested in. That's good. Tritanium hull. Good stealth. Good. Good. None of these are in a position I want to change them, right? Right, 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 right. These are good. These are fantastic. Good. Good. So the Intrepid, yeah, the Intrepid actually doesn't need to upgrade any. How much is it to upgrade these? Yeah, go go upgrade your fleets. What's the... What are you upgrading? Probably Tritanium Hull? No, they're switching out the science consoles for the Dervish system. Okay, yeah. I can work with that. I can happily work with that. How... How the hell are my ships making it from over here to- Oh, they're going through the Ferengis. Oh, because the Ferengi are our pr protectorate. We do have contiguous borders. It's just going into 
old Bajor space that's still difficult because Tholians hate us, Cardassians hate us, and the Tamarians, the Tamarian, Tamarian unity, however you pronounce it, they're not our biggest fans. Not by a long shot. Build me a colonial bureau. Thank you. I know. I remember I was promising to make more star bases, but I put that off entirely because I have. I want to build the size of our fleet even larger, and I'm throwing that right out the window as I'm spending on these star bases. No, no, bring that back. The sensor profile of a mid sized vessel was briefly detected inside the upper atmosphere of. Domitus 6. I think as we hit the core, we're going to be seeing more and more generic events. It's totally okay. But we've we've aggressively chewed our way through many of the uh, mods added by the New Horizons mod. Did I say mod added? Events added by the New Horizons mod. Station still upgrading. Delightful. Fleet manager, you will cost 23 thousand minerals to upgrade entirely. Dang. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I guess I can just upgrade one fleet at a time, maybe. Or really, I can probably afford to hold off. Hmm. No, this is a space station that caused us trouble in the past. I'd rather go in completely overcompensating than uh, running the risk of that awkwardly failing again. It didn't even fail last time. We didn't lose. We may have lost one ship attacking this, but it would have taken a very, very long time. And I was not willing to put in that time investment. How are the Noskins doing? 22%. Let's keep going. We still don't have a use for sodium tetrahydrate. I'm, I'm almost positive sodium tetrahydrate is used in the production of tetracel white. Ketracel, not tetracel, ketracel white. But I can't see the Dominion planet, so I can't see the buildings. Alright, we good? We got Starport. Starports allow the player to trade energy credits for a range of possible imported goods. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Starport is just another upgrade for something I already don't use. Psycho History Center will increase society output. Might as well go for that. It'll only be on our capital, but whatever. Science output is still looking pretty good. Pretty good. Our unity output's a little ra ridiculous now. Once we grab harmony, preservation, diplomacy, and discovery, we're going to have a lot of restructuring. A lot of restructuring to do. I'm swinging down. I'm taking a look at the neo-transcendentalists. Will you be happier if we're a harmonious empire? It'll be 41% happiness, but you'll be happier. So maybe. Adopting the first stage of harmony will give us access to the Imperial Plantation, which allows most species to produce a cultural, culturally unique trade good. Huh. Interesting. Now, discovery is tempting because anomaly discovery chance and fail risk reduced or increased. More research point unity output increased by different planet classes I have colonized up to a maximum of 30%. This would boost unity output. I don't think, well, the uh, Frontier Grove probably would improve output. <laughs> Medical base science vessel module and Hardy Pioneers colony ship module. Don't know what that does, sounds interesting. Habitability being increased is cool. Terraforming cost reduced. We're not terraforming anything right now though. No. Unity output is increased 5% per member of our coalitions and alliances, up to a member of maximum of 30%. We have a decent number of people in our coalition, so federal unity would be nice. 
why don't we go for pushing the frontier and then go for federal unity that seems like the best way to boost our unity output yeah Department of Cartography, the number of xenobotanists and archaeologists has steadily increased throughout the fleet over the last years, now organized into a special Department of Cartography. To support this core of officers, new training programs have greatly accelerated the rate at which we accomplish new officers, commission, new officers, and undergo new exploration missions. Undergo or undertake? Probably both. probably undertake actually a ship and its crew undergo that mission but a, a nation state the organization undertakes it right that that hold up google undertake not undertaker <laughs> to commit oneself and begin an enterprise of responsibility to take on undergo is to experience or be subjected to something typically something unpleasant painful or arduous so undertake would be a better slightly more positive word <laughs> to use in that context Survey complete. who this garoppolo upgraded huh Oh, we can probably be... I We have minerals, and I'm intentionally not spending them because I'm like, hey, we need to save this. But I just have a burning desire just to just build as many planetary structures as possible. Greetings, Prime Minister Yoshinobu... Yoshinobu Hasegawa. Plan talks to bring the Nausicaan people into the United Federation of Planets are progressing. But there remains a number of questions around the different worldviews we hold in certain areas. We are told that diversity is strength, but how can we reconcile my people's mistrust of aliens and Aryan cultures with your xenophilia? I'm open to any suggestions you might have. We should support local initiatives. Really, I'd love to fund education programs, but we can't, so support local initiatives. Ships upgraded. Just automatic exploration. Complete. Knock yourself out. Can we grab Sagittarius A? I get the core. Not that it makes a difference. Sagittarius A has decent deposits on it, but it's nothing amazing. Alright. Why don't you move up here? I don't have anything for you to do right now, but it would just look better if you were up there. Delp. Delp, 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 delp. Uh, let's, hmm, yeah. Build that research station that didn't get done for some reason. Am I, in upgrading or uh, reinforcing my fleet, I'm more or less doubling the number of ships that I'm running. Jupiter station's busy. Jesus, I'm building all seven of those at once? God damn. <laughs> Jupiter station's badass. And it still hasn't upgraded. So we have one, two, three, seven. Seven shipyard slots. That's amazing. I mean, it's not that amazing, but Utopia Plant Planitia? Plantia? is really good. Construction. Fleet Academy makes them start with more experience, traffic control, and crew quarters. Yeah. Can't fully reinforce yet, right? Yeah, that'll cost... Oop, now I can. Goodbye, money! The Morali states made a tributary out of the Fremen allied commonalities. Huh. It's not just us doing it. The Freeman or Fremen allied commonalities. I guess big powers are starting to be big enough, significantly more powerful, that they can turn others into tributaries and protectorates. That's cool. 
I mean, clearly we're doing it more than anyone else, but it's cool to see other people at it. Now, the Borgs still don't look that impressive, but they're getting there. The fact that we're only equivalent and we have a quarter of the galaxy <laughs> scares me. It seems perhaps wise to make an effort to integrate powers moving Borgward and isolate them. Though it might be more interesting just to let them do their own thing and have them be sort of the big bad we fight at the end of the game. It's hard to say. I'm gonna go after... Deep Space Ready Fighter Craft. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not using Fighter Craft. Let's go after Exceed Arcology just because it's the cheapest thing, not something I'm gonna build. Now, we've been recording for an hour. I'm gonna keep streaming uh, for the rest of the night. Not, you know, the entire rest of the night, but the next few hours anyway. If you are watching this on Twitch, thanks for hanging out. If you're watching this on YouTube, out the fact, thanks for hanging out, but you're gonna have to stop by again tomorrow. Till then, make sure to comment, share, like, subscribe, all that, etc., etc., etc. You, you know what to do. Till then, toodaloo, take care. I'll see you later. Bye bye <laughs>